Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chavis CD Shave, and thank you very much for joining me for today's face shave and the soap profiling of the day. That's right. We are doing a soap profiling of a very special soap from a very, for a very special cause. And that soap is Nantahala. That's how you say that. There's the cover to it right there. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get into that, let's talk about the holiday of the day. Today's holiday of the day is National Pierogi Day. And when I saw that listed, I thought to myself, you know, those things don't get enough attention. I mean, it's not very often you hear people say, let's have a, let's have pierogies tonight. Those things are great. People say it about pizza. They say it about cheeseburgers. They say it about steak. Nobody ever says that about pierogies. Those things are pretty good. So I think you should give them the, the attention that they deserve and have pierogies tonight. Anyway, that's the holiday of the day from CD Shaving. But if you clicked on this video uh, entitled Nantahala, you did not wish to see a video on pierogies. So you're looking for a video on this profile. So here we go. All right, this is a soap collaboration done by Murphy and McNeil primarily and Mr. Joe Caton of Black Mountain Shaving. It is a Kodiak shave soap base, meaning that it has bare fat in it. We'll get more into that in a little bit. Let's talk about the rest of the gear. Of course, we always have on standby Allen Block. If you folks don't have one of these, I highly suggest you get it. Even if you don't use it to treat your face, but you use it to take the slippage away on the fingers when holding the razor. And in this case, one of these babies. Gold Dollar 100. All honed up, shaved, ready to go. And I think you have a lot of stuff for that thing to mow right off my face. Incidentally, <clears throat> we are going to get into the brush as well. This is going to be by Grizzly Bay here. We get a nice green color with the synthetic knot. Synthetic knot for you animal lovers out there. I also have, with this soap, the pairing aftershave. Right there. I can't wait to give this stuff a shot. I kind of smelled it off the puck, and it smells really, really nice. Uh, speaking of after the shave, we, of course, have our standard decanter here with the spray bottle of witch hazel that I always throw on. And also, speaking of the aftershave, we get a matching EDT to go with this. So Nantala right here. So get all this stuff, and I've got the soap that was soaking. There it is right there. It comes in a huge, or a standard size jar, but it's got a lot in it. This, this jar is very heavy. 5.5 uh, ounces, that's quite a bit. Off the puck, oh, it smells fantastic. Definitely really, really has a nice scent to it. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, how does it load? Well, we're gonna load it up in a second here. Or wet the brush, wet the face, load up the soap. And while we're doing that, take a look at this. Nature is resilient and has ways of recovering from natural disasters such as weather, evolution, or even celestial based. But with the impact of humans, Mother Nature needs every help she can get. That's what Joe Caton of Black Mountain Shaving had in mind when he collaborated with Murphy and McNeil for this epic release. Other contributing collaborators on this project included John Williams from Grizzly Bay Brushes, Matt Darrington of Teton Shaves, and artwork by Rafa of Chicago Design. Here we have Kodiak Nantahala. Joe wanted to create a shave soap that honored his memory of one of the most beautiful landscapes of the United States. He spent much of his youth visiting Nantahala Forest, sitting deep in the western mountains of North Carolina. Joe also wanted to find a way to help contribute to the conservation efforts, and what better way to have a portion of the proceeds from this release go to nature.org, one of the most well-known conservation organizations available. This tallow-based shave soap is made from bear fat, which makes it unique amongst the shave soap options on the market today. There are several scent notes in this creation, some of which include citrus, lavender, melon, rosemary, suede, wood, and amber. It comes in a healthy-sized 5.0-ounce plastic container with a screw-top lid and waterproof label. The aftershave comes in a standard 100-milliliter glass decanter with a metal screw-top cap, and the EDT comes in a 15-milliliter glass spray bottle with a slip-on cap. Each item will be available for purchase separately or in a box set. The release can be found at murphyandmcneil.com as well as several other places for purchase on or after the debut date of October 12th at 9 a.m. Central Time.
a fantastic scent using rare ingredients for an honorable cause. A shave soap that in my book is worth having in anyone's den. Hey ladies and gentlemen, we are back. As you can see, I've really kind of hardly touched any of that um, off the puck. And I loaded the crap out of that brush. That is completely loaded with soap, all ready to go there. Now, I did want to mention when you get these, uh, for the packaging purposes, when you get that box that I showed you earlier, each one of the uh, glass containers comes in one of these bags here, which is kind of a nice touch. It keeps the bottles from rattling around on each other and keeps them protected. These are also, I think, are good to have for travel. You can wrap your stuff in this, uh, razors, really anything you want, even an Allen block to keep it from getting hit against something that might cause it to crack or break. And if it does, then you don't get shards of alum everywhere. Either way, these little bags are handy to have, and I appreciate the added accessory to the box, or packaging, I should say. All right, so moving on, uh, I also want to let, make you aware that the this stuff will be, when it is released and available per, for purchase, as I said, it's on, it's available from murphymcneil.com. It'll also be available at uh, Maggard Razors, uh, top of the chain, and there's a potential that it will be available over at Pastor's Pharmacy, but that has not been confirmed as of yet. But if you have any questions and you want to know if they carry it, just call them and ask. I'm sure they'll tell you. Uh, incidentally, we are going to give this Nantahala, which uh, is also a Cherokee from what I understand for uh, jumping waters, I believe is what it means. So anyway, we're going to wet the face here. We're gonna wet the face. I'm gonna go for a lather, just to see how this does. This is the first time I've ever used bare fat. Get a little bit of water onto that. I mean, it's tallow. I can't imagine there. I'll have any trouble with it. But it's a great, great cause. I'm always up for any kind of soaps that support any kind of cause, really. But I'm especially conservation-based ones. Um, that's a huge deal. Well, I think somebody told me that this would be a thirsty soap. I don't think so. I don't think it's any more thirsty than any other tallow based soap that I've used, or even vegan ones for that matter. Yeah, there we go. There's the rest of the soap right there on the brush. Yeah, I don't, uh, I thought it lathered quite well. As you can see, it's got a nice covering to it. Uh, I thought it loaded fantastic. You know, it took about 15, 20 seconds for me to load. Uh, I'm rocking and rolling, ready to go. So let's get this shave happening now.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Let's get right into the post shave. A little witch hazel. Let that sit and do its thing. As far as the shave is concerned, I felt it did a very, very good job. I thought the slickness was there. This is actually one of the uh, one of the first Murphy McNeil uh, soaps, base soaps that I've used, and I'm really happy that it's this Kodiak base because it's a brand new base for them. Uh, as far as the slickness is concerned, it was definitely there. Residual slickness was there. Ease of loading, I didn't have a problem with it. I did, like I said, I saw comments earlier that said, um, or I read somewhere, I think it was on the description, it might have been on the website, that said it required extra water, which I don't always think is a good thing. Um, I didn't think that was the case with this at all. I just added the normal amount of water that I add to it, and I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, shaved fine. <clears throat> I have a little bit of irritation here, but that's not the soap, it's the razor. I'm, the razor needs to be honed, and I'm pushing it beyond its capabilities right now, but that's neither here nor there. Other than that, it feels really nice. I got a really, really, really smooth shave. I'm pretty happy with it. That witch hazel set in pretty nicely, so I think we're going to throw on the aftershave. Hands are a little slick here. Throw on that Allen block. There we go. Uh, the scent strength, as far as I was concerned, I'd give it about an eight. I mean, it was definitely strong. It wasn't the strongest. It doesn't fill up the entire room, but uh, actually right now all I can smell is that stupid peach witch hazel. I can't wait till that stuff is gone. I may just throw that away. I don't do not like peach at all. Anyway, however, uh, cracking this open, I can smell it just off the bottle. It smells really nice. So the scent strength I give about an eight, which is, you know, perfect for my wheelhouse. I like heavy scented soaps. Nice little stinging action. Not too much, just a little bit. The scent is kind of, it's almost like an, it's a cologne based scent, which again is right up my wheelhouse here, or right up my alley. Um, but it almost has a little bit of a woodsy amberish scent to it, which makes sense because of the notes, but that's what I get off of it. I like it. I like this a lot. It, it, it kind of reminds me of this. It's in the same category as uh, Fahrenheit and Jimmy Choo Man. Uh, Valley of Fire um, by uh, Talbot Shaving uh, is based off a of Chimichu Man. And it's got that kind of, uh, a, it's in that same category. And Fahrenheit, which is done, uh, which is duped, I think by Peter Chakalis did one of them, but more commonly known and more recently known, um, it was done by uh, First Line Shave. They did uh, their red um, release, is Fahrenheit based. And uh, that also is, it's not the same scent by any means. It's just in the same category for me. And I like it a lot, which is a little bit of woodsiness added to it, uh, which is not always a bad thing, especially consider the uh, cause that it goes to support. Now, as far as the cologne is concerned, I'll give it a smell. I'm not going to throw it on yet. It smells just like the aftershave. It's, uh, it's, pretty, well, it's pretty strong. Um... Actually, you know what the heck with it. We'll spray it on. Yeah, just like the aftershave. And I'm sure it'll be strong, stronger. Hmm, got a little bit in my mouth. I don't suggest you ingest this stuff. I don't think it's meant for human consumption. I'm sure Joe will correct me if it is. Anyway, so that is the shave. Ladies and gentlemen, I do recommend this both for the cause and the fact that it's a slick base. It works well. It's got plenty of residual slickness. And the post shave, while obviously I haven't used it for, you know, for the entire day, so that remains to be seen, but we're off to a great start, I'll tell you that. The aftershave works perfect. The, uh, the EDT is a definite nice addition to it. Not a must-have, but it is a nice luxury if you can swing it. And that is our review. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. I'm Chad with CV Shave, and if you have any shaves today, please have great shaves. Have a great rest of the day. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so by hitting the subscription button, but make sure you knock that bell. That way you get a notification every time we do a new video here at CD Shaven. Folks, have a great day, and we'll see you guys and girls in the next video.